lawmakers in Washington appear to be doing their part. Reportedly, they are close to a deal on a federal budget. John Harwood joins us now from Washington. So, John, tell us uh, how things are going and where do those budget negotiations stand right now? Well, Susie, I'd say the lawmakers are doing their part a little bit. It does not look as if they're on the brink of a huge grand bargain deal, the kind that would put our long-term entitlement programs and revenue stream on sounder footing. But it is a modest deal that they're getting close to announcing, perhaps by the end of this week, that would reshuffle $90 billion over two years. It would lift the sequester caps uh, with equal amounts being raised for both domestic and discretionary spending. And that would be offset so that it doesn't add to the deficit by some revenue increases, though not taxes, uh, and some entitlement cuts, though not Medicare and Social Security, the two programs that have long-term funding problems. Uh, it's a modest deal, but lawmakers hope that they can announce it by the end of the week, enact it next week, and avoid a government shutdown in January. All right, so, uh, John, who are the winners and losers in this budget to the extent we know what stays and what goes? And, and maybe more pointedly, what does this mean for those looming deadlines, the government shutdown number, which was, I think, uh, middle of January, and then the debt ceiling uh, debate, which resurfaces then again, I think, right around the Super Bowl? Tyler, it means both that the uh, uh, debt ceiling increase and the uh, uh, government funding are likely to occur as scheduled, avoid a crisis like we had. Uh, lawmakers don't have much appetite for that, especially going into an election year. Um, so in that sense, it's good news for the entire country. In terms of losers, the kinds of fees they're talking about, and again, we don't have a final deal, are things like higher airline ticket fees. The president had those in his budget. And when you look at the budget cuts, Again, not Medicare, Social Security cuts, but federal retirement benefits would be cut somewhat, uh, so federal workers could be losers to a small degree in this deal. John, I also want to ask you about President Obama's speech today about the nation's growing income divide. But first, let's listen to this clip. The idea that a child may never be able to escape that poverty because she lacks a decent education or health care or a community that views her future as their own, that should offend all of us. And it should compel us to action. We are a better country than this. So, John, what does the budget have to do with the speech the president gave today? Well, the, the president uh, has two goals. One, the first is do no harm to the economy. And if they can get a budget deal, avoid a shutdown, that would meet that goal. But longer term, he's got more proactive things he wants to do, like raise the minimum wage, spend on education and infrastructure. He may not even get those out of this Congress, but what he's hoping to do with speeches like this one today is plow the ground for future years, maybe even future presidents, to make progress on those priorities. I'm sure it's going to create a lot of heated debate on the Hill. But thanks a lot for that update. John Harwood from Washington.